Good afternoon. Dear participants, honored guests, colleagues, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation day of the Erasmus Mundus Master Programs, Plot Risk Management and Ground Watch. I now give the floor to the Rector of IHG, Professor Eddie Morris. Thank you very much, and uh, I would like to welcome all of you, also those that are uh, online. I think uh, it's always an, uh, a special day, uh, then at the end of uh, the day, when we're seeing a lot of people very nicely dressed up here, a lot of expectations, I think, as well. And I think those expectations are also based on the fact that uh, I think this is also a sort of an, a ceremony where we uh, try to celebrate uh, a couple of things. Uh, one is, of course, that uh, this will be a new phase for a lot of you over here, but also quite important for us is the collaboration that we have with the different institutions uh, to Europe. And we very much are supporting uh, this collaboration and would like to strengthen this even further. So for us, uh, having you here from all parts of the world, traveling around Europe, coming back to Delft, leaving Delft again and going somewhere else. But hopefully in the end, um, and that's my hope, is that you all will become one of the water leaders that we urgently need in the world. And with what you see happening at the moment in different countries all over, you see that there are a lot of disasters coming. It's not only about those disasters, it's also about the needs. The needs that are there already for some time, but those needs are increasing. We see climate change uh, making it even more difficult to comply to those needs. And we think that uh, with your help, we hopefully are able to solve that. So that's why we're counting on you. And that's why we're so happy that uh, you're here today and that we can celebrate uh, this uh, end of an, an, a journey together with you. But like I said, I also hope that this is the start of a new journey and that you will show us how we should do that. So with that, uh, I would like to welcome everybody, also your supporters, also the people who made this possible here, both uh, family that missed you for some time, but also people from administration in the different uh, parts uh, where you were to make sure that you had a room, that there was a classroom, that there was a laptop, that there were people that were in the same room to share knowledge. And I hope that you will continue doing this. So with that, I would like uh, to give the floor back uh, to Anik, who will guide us to today's uh, ceremony, and I hope you will enjoy that. Anik. Thank you, Eddie. I would now like to invite uh, my colleague, Dr. Bishwa Patasheria, to come to Thank you, Anik. Graduating students, I see many happy faces. The family members, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a happy day. Happy day because 50 of you are graduating from two programs, flood risk management and ground watch. And next year, we'll have graduation of four programs and I guess it will be about 100 students. When you started about 13 years back, we could never imagine this kind of numbers. So I'm very happy about that. I hope that you are also happy. And I'm sure that these graduating students will be using your new knowledge as a weapon to solve the problem of water. Today, the 10th batch of flood risk management students are graduating. And with this one, I think uh, we have about more than 200 floods in the world working in all countries, all continents, in different organizations, solving global water challenges, global flooding issues. I'm very happy about that. And when I 
meet other colleagues from other organizations in different conferences and meetings. And when they talk about this program, oh, I feel that maybe, maybe this program has an impact. There are many people who talk about this and they are happy about it. So the program is also well known. There are many who are talking about this, so that's very good. And also to let you know that uh, uh, European Commission has leveled this program sometimes back as a success story of their Erasmus program. So we are very happy about that. I also take this opportunity to thank the European Commission for funding this program. And I would let you know that also we are happy that uh, they have funded us again, flood risk management and also ground watch. My colleague Tibor is here. So both programs are funded to run for about five, six more years. So we'll have this show even in the future coming years. So that's very good. Uh, I think um, I take this opportunity also to congratulate this uh, students of flood risk management and ground watch. I think collectively you will all contribute to solving global water challenge and you will carry your flag in the future in all parts of the world. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Gita. You can stay on stage, please. Vishwa, you can stay on stage. And I ask Professor Eddie Morris to join him. Because now we proceed with the first part of the awarding ceremony. Um, first, the IEG group. I will call out the graduates' names. And um, one by one, you can come to the stage and receive your diploma, and we have a photo moment. First, we start with Miss Cristiana Agato dos Santos from Brazil with distinction. Chani from Tunisia. <laughs> no? Oh. Then we continue. Mr. Emil Oosterhuis from Nederland. Shibeshi from Ethiopia. Thank you, Adi and Bishra. You can take your seat for now. <laughs> Congratulations to the first graduates. We now continue with the next speaker, Professor Krebs, Peter Krebs from TUD Dresden. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here, Min Heer Director. Uh, dear colleagues and friends, dear family members, dear students, you are the main actress of today, so I will address some words to you. 
probably when you received uh, that you were successful, when you received the message that you were successful with your application and this was very competitive among hundreds of applications, you were chosen to be the students funded by the Erasmus program, you were starting to hesitate. Is it worthwhile doing this? Because you saw this complexity, you, you can't go through more complexly organized master courses than the Erasmus courses. Three or four different universities, three or four different times you have to look for an apartment and for accommodation. And uh, you're on your own, you leave your friends at home and you come to a completely new environment, most of you to a new continent which you haven't experienced before. So is it, is it worthwhile doing so? But then obviously, since you are here, you said yes to that question because you're very engaged with water and you see water as one of the most important, um, not elements in a chemical sense, but elements as a basics of life, which is indispensable. And that's why you wanted to come here to Europe in order to, uh, to go through this course and to take all the load onto you. We have more pressing water problems than in any other times. We are overusing resources, we are deteriorating their qualities, we are adding new chemical substances literally every day to surface and groundwaters. This is a real channel we want to keep and we want to improve water security and water safety. Now, groundwater and managing extremes, since flood risk management turned out not to be a flood-related course only, but it also started to engage with droughts, which is very important from my perspective. So dealing with groundwater and extremes are two of the main uh, aspects of the most important aspects of this uh, when we talk about water security. We try to teach you methods and what I have seen in a summary this morning really convinced me that we were successful. This is not always clear when you look at the faces in the, um, in the lectures, but today it became clear that methodology-wise you are extremely well equipped. I heard also some feedback that the topic is rather narrow, but yes, but it's just the case. Method-wise, you're equipped with an extremely large methodology toolbox which you can apply to different areas. And what we have seen in the lectures of this afternoon, that is uh, really true. They were not concentrating on what was taught in the uh, Erasmus courses. So, take home, there is no tailor-made solution. There are tailor-made methodology, methodologies to come to a tailor-made solution. And the solution may look very differently depend on where you implement it. But the course is not only about water and science and methods. The course is all, also and equally important about coming together from all the continents of the globe, becoming friends within a relatively short time and very convincingly, you were showing this with your videos of uh, this early afternoon where you showed us that you really had a good time. So it's about tolerance against or with other cultures, with other people around the world, with other countries. It's about open-mindedness and please bring that home also. This is a factor that is needed uh, more urgently than ever before and try to make and advocate that water is not the reason for separating countries but for unifying countries. So it's a, an element of peace, it's not an element of war. Although there are always the rumors that next uh, wars are about water, I'm not convinced. Next pieces should be about water and you are the important people bringing that to all the parts in the world. Now we are going to leave Delft. Maybe you are going to leave Europe. Maybe you are going back home. Maybe you are looking for a PhD somewhere in Europe. I don't know. But you split, you disperse. But you became a member of a huge family at the same time. And uh, I wish you all the best to keep this family membership 
and to bring this message also out there into the world. Thank you very much. I now call back director and Vishwa to stage and we go with the awarding. Ms. Betu Aslantas from Turkey. Oh, she's not. Then we continue. <laughs> Mr. Sherefdin Olamik Lehmilikan Babalola from Nigeria. Mr. Mohammed Ahmed Mohammed Ibrahim El Bora from Egypt. Doreen Barbara Holzum from Germany. Mr. Bashir Husseini from Azerbaijan. Mr. Liola Ola Kinya Kinka Ola Olo Lade from Nigeria. Khalid from Pakistan. We now continue with the next speaker from UPC Barcelona, Professor Alan Waterman. Thank you very much. Hello. Um, dear, dear parents, dear colleagues, we had to congratulate the students today. I am very happy because uh, they finish. <laughs>
finally, <laughs> uh, we have, I, I, I don't remember, but 10 years is uh, the first uh, batch. And I feel very uh, emotional because uh, I never, I never think that uh, this happened 10, 10 years during, it's so hard. Uh, perhaps 200 students, I don't know. So more than 200 students. Uh, it's a lot of people, it's a lot of people. And uh, I, I don't prepare nothing to, for today because this is 10 years and you don't have to prepare nothing. But I remember my first speech uh, is compare your life with rivers. And all the people, oh my God, rivers and life are the same. Yes, your life has, is like rivers. It's like rivers because uh, rivers change during the, the trajectory. Some de, some, in, some, in some way, this is calm. In some way, it's very hard with hydraulic jumps, like in your life, like in your, yeah, in your life. Uh, you born very up in the mountain and go to the sea. And when you arrive to the sea, you become. Yes, life is uh, like rivers. I also, uh, perhaps the fourth, fourth is, uh, batch, I speak about uh, the Beatles. Oh, yes, the Beatles, very interesting, the Beatles, because they have a lot of words that uh, perhaps help you in your life. Like imagine that uh, mm -hmm. someone sings today uh, or other, uh, other sentences that are very interesting. Then uh, I feel a little bit sad because life is passing so fast. And uh, for you also, life passes so fast. You have to do a lot of things now. Don't do it tomorrow. Do it now, okay? And I perhaps is is the sentence that you heard when you were very little. Make the things now. Yes, you have to do now because the future is tomorrow. Years pass very fast. Mm, well, I only uh, say that uh, have good life. Uh, love equations, please. <laughs> yes, you know, I know that you don't know, you don't like equations, but uh, are my family. <laughs> and uh, perhaps you, uh, I, I wish you uh, the best of the life in the future. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll ask back Director and Vishwa. Mr. Andres Felipe Cortez Moreno from Colombia. from India. Georgia Manu from Greece.
Adriana Tapia Hurtado from Bolivia. Mr. Thomas Paulo Zuniga de Leon from the Philippines. Thank you, gentlemen. You can take a seat again. We now continue with the next speaker. I would like to invite Dr. Simon Ruschan from the University of Ljubljana, Slovenia. The floor is yours. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear graduates of both studies. It's really a privilege to be here at this special day for you. Um, as we could see from the presentation and the um, program that we had before, uh, a lot of good memories will remain with the good interpretation of FRN students. But you should be aware that together with these memories, you obtain also very good competence. You're actually able to work in every kind of working or other environment and prove that during your study during finding your uh, staying, during organizing your life in different countries at different universities uh, that you visit. Uh, and one thing is certain, if you decide to remain in the field of uh, flood risk management or water management in general, you won't run out of challenges. Uh, this year, I don't know, uh, we had a major, major flood in Slovenia one month ago. Almost one third of Slovenia was heavily damaged. Uh, but last year we were talking about extreme droughts. Most of general public for, forgot the, what happened last year. And of course, think of water management problems only in terms of the excess of water quantities in terms of uh, floods that we are facing this year. And every such event, proves that it is extremely difficult to have a sort of a common understanding of, let's say, flood risk related uh, processes. It is very difficult to communicate these problems with general public. And here I see the, the major role of you as an expert in this field, that you will be able to, to build to help build society that will be less vulnerable and more resilient to all these uh, events. Uh, as a, as a, maybe as a um, suggestion for your future career, I think that the, um, the uh, thing that Professor Allen said before to compare uh, life with the river is a very good one. So go with the flow uh, and uh, let yourself um, be surprised by the life that uh, is in front of you in terms of the uh, professional challenges and, of course, in every other sort of personal lives. And at the end, I would just like to congratulate you and wish you all the best in your future life. Thank you. Eddie and Vishwa, can you join him? <laughs> Miss Christina Unger from Kazakhstan.
Ms. Livia Beatrice Marchado de Almeida. <laughs> Take a seat. Uh, we now have one more person who we would like your, to ask your attention. Ms. Sagar Al Madian from Iran, please come to the stage. She is not here? She promised to be here. Oh. <laughs> now, she is uh, um, almost finished. We've, we, we wish her the very best of luck in completing the final steps towards the graduation. She has a little extension to the program, but we wish her all the best. We now come to the awarding part for the Groundwatch graduates. I would like to ask Dr. Kubar Sitter on stage for a short address. Thank you, Nick. Um, dear guests, dear colleagues, of course, dear graduates, and in particular, dear ground watchers. Um, I'm very happy, uh, as we are all, it's a word that comes back a lot, but I am very happy that we are already at the seventh uh, um, graduation day of Grand Watch, and uh, that is a lucky number. And uh, indeed, uh, Nico, this morning already mentioned that, that you're lucky, but I think more than luck, it, it took you blood, sweat, and tears to get where you are now. And, uh, and in that sense, uh, you all really deserve um, a great compliment. Some of you are still in the middle of that process, so maybe a little more anxious than others. But as a dear colleague of ours um, used, used, used to say, um, in the end, it will be fine. Um, and that, in fact, is a, yeah, has a quite a deeper meaning than we often think about. But it's a process. Um, basically, it seems forever ago, but it was uh, two years ago you came to Lisbon. Dr. Hazel will tell, tell a bit more about that. And it was still COVID time. Omicron. Lockdown. Um, it seems surreal to talk about those times, but they do remind us on how fragile we are and also how we are actually shaping or perhaps misshaping um, the world. Uh, we heard a bit about that as well. And, and we, we could read in Science Advance yesterday that, in fact, um, it said there that the Earth is beyond six of the nine planetary boundaries. And fresh water access is actually one of those boundaries. And um, yeah, of course, I quote, they mentioned, Earth is now well outside of the safe operating space for humanity. That sounds very dramatic. But the good news is, is that there is still time, time is running out, but there is still time, and we need you more than ever to deal with the, 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 the issues that, that lie ahead of us. So, today here you are, at the end of your journey, to your journey, or almost at the end of that journey, and it is a very important chapter in your life, of course. Um, you have finalized a two-year master's study in which you have gained knowledge and skills in a field that is very precious to all of us, um, namely that of the largest liquid freshwater reservoir on Earth, that of groundwater. And it is invisible, but then, of course, also important. You belong to a group of about 150 uh, groundwatchers at the moment. We are also growing. And uh, you were selected from a group of over 5,000 applicants over the past eight years. So you're also, in that sense, uh, a group that, that has had that privilege, but also has deserved it. And, um, of course, that that the successful edition of Groundwatch is always uh, also big thanks to the partners and the staff, the scientific and support staff, that are always there to guarantee the success. Um, and also the many associated partners, of course, on board. We have over 40 associated partners in a big network global, and many of you have actually joined them for thesis or internship phases. And as actually um, Vishal was mentioning, we are also 
happy to announce that we are going to continue to grow and be with, with, with each other over the coming years, thanks to additional funding by the EU and other donors. So, now that you're officially um, going to be a Groundwatcher, of course, you will also be the ambassador of Groundwatcher itself, because with this diploma comes great responsibility. Um, you shall share uh, um, your thoughts, you apply your thoughts, your ideas, your knowledge and skills uh, with respect to transparency and how to protect the freshwater reservoir um, and how to optimize it, this resource in a changing and a growing world. Now, you will share that knowledge with others um, because that is the whole philosophy behind these programs that we try to disseminate and build skills that can then be um, further built uh, by you. So, uh, it is now your moment and it is your time indeed, indeed to become uh, world leaders or leaders or any way you want to call it, but some type of role that you will have in your future professional life, whether it is in academia, whether it is in private or governmental sectors, um, this is the moment um, well, that we will wait actually for the ideas that you bring and the initiatives that you will uptake. So having said that, um, please go ahead and do that, but do it in the role that suits you best and that you feel most comfortable in. So good luck with that, and we'll be with you. We're proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Tibor. Um, may I ask Eddie to join Tibor on stage? Mr. Mohammed Al Kurd from the State of Palestine. Ms. Deborah Ayoledele from Nigeria. Sarata Darbu from Gambia. Ms. Tasnia Aisha Essa from Bangladesh. Mr. Felis Yoga from Germany with the <laughs> Mr. 
is Claudia Medina Montezinos from Bolivia. Ms. Melanie Schad from Germany. Mr. Shafkat Sharif from Bangladesh. Ms. Valentina Uribe Geramilo from Colombia. I would now like to invite on stage Dr. Teresa Taylor from the University of Lisbon. Good afternoon, dear IT director, dear colleagues, dear students, and dear in your families who are following online. It's a pleasure for me today to share the stage with you, to celebrate your graduation and success of flood risk and groundwatch programs. European Commission evaluated these programs and get us extra five years of funding and that makes us very happy. I'm aware, and now I'm addressing these words specifically for ground watchers. I'm aware that uh, for ground watchers, the first semester in Lisbon is never particularly easy. Not to say particularly difficult. A school of engineering, too many mini tests and assignments, not to mention that we're still wearing masks and giving hybrid classes, which are, for me are more difficult than in Zoom. Um, after listening to you this morning, I believe you had very little time to socialize in Lisbon and to discover a beautiful and historical city in the welcoming, welcoming small country, Portugal, that has been open to the new world and the, particularly to the global south since the 15th century. For ground watchers in Lisbon, is always the first step stop in Europe. And for many of you, the first time you live, you are away from home, you are away from your family, in your comfort zone. But Europe also represents for you, as it represented for me and for us all, a land of opportunities. And now after the two years moving from Lisbon to Delft and to Dresden, going forward and backwards, and also with an important stop for socializing in Digne for two weeks during the field work, I believe that you are all now better prepared uh, to face the major challenges of your life and looming over your future. Coming from Portugal, uh, where surfing is becoming almost as popular as football, I would like to remind you that in your lives, there will always be waves, some rather big, and if you think about COVID or the heat waves or social waves or even the war. But the important thing is that you are ready to learn how to surf them. And learning to surf the waves of life means learning to adapt to changes and challenges rather than trying to resist 
and control them. The climatic crisis which flooded recently central Spain in Madrid, Greece or Libya, but left the Western Iberian Peninsula still counting the, rain, uh, the, the raindrops continuously raises awareness through the importance of groundwater. To make groundwater more visible, like Tibor already said today, is also now in your hands. And I trust you can make it. A toast to the ones that are here today and to the ones who could come, like Christian and uh, Rodrigo, that wish you all the best. And also uh, a toast to Luis, our former, who is not anymore, we, our former coordinator who is not anymore with us. So enjoy life and count with us. Tibor and Eddie, can you please join? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Cesar Augusto Espinosa from Colombia. <laughs> Jose Garcia Salazar from Argentina. <laughs> Patias Nimunya Lubinga from Zambia. Jonathan Opoku Oti from Ghana. Take a seat again. We continue with the last group of the Bright Watch to you, Dresden group. So I ask back to the stage, Professor Gibbs. I don't know whether you prepared a separate speech no. for this group, but I think we can just go ahead and award the diploma. <laughs> Thank you, Timor and Eddie. Please, can you join Professor Gibbs? Mr. Olavala, Joshua, Abidaku, and Nigeria. Mariana Akter from Bangladesh.
Snehak Hamid from Pakistan. <laughs> Today, Mr. Chibuke Emmanuel Oratsulike from Nigeria. We have six more persons for whom I would like to ask your attention. They are all part of the Grand Coach group and also almost finished. However, they have to be, be a bit more patient before graduating. We wish them the very best of luck on the completion of the, towards the diploma awarding. I will now call you one by one to stage two. Mm -hmm. Ms. Tania Stefania Agudelo Mendieta from Colombia. from Brazil. Almira Shamshiri from Iran. from China.
Yes, gentlemen, now you can let your seat again. Apologies. Dear all, this concludes our program for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. And, I, and with this, I would like to take the opportunity to thank everybody for doing their part, especially a big thanks to our partner universities and for the ladies of the planning office who made sure you have your diploma today. And um, once more... <laughs> Congratulations. I would like to stress that this diploma is a unique issue. Handle it with care. In case of loss, it cannot be, you be, cannot be given a new one. The institute does not hold copies. We therefore strongly advise you to make a photocopy, PDF scan of your diploma and diploma supplement for safekeeping. After this ceremony ends, I ask you to please leave with us with the, after the cortege uh, leaves the auditorium, and we then group outside the building for group pictures. I now give the floor back to the rector of IG Delft to close the meeting. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Anik, and uh, I would like to congratulate uh, all of you. I think you did uh, very well, so I would like to give you a hand of applause. Like I said in the beginning, I'm really proud of this collaboration that we have through Europe, but I'm also very proud to hear all the countries where you're coming from, and that you're coming from so many parts of the world, and I hope that you will also go back either to those parts or other parts, and you will take up this role, this water leader role that we really need. And leadership for us is that you have knowledge, and I hope that we helped you to at least know what methods you can use, but also that you then stand up what you know about and speak out to others and help them actually to find a good way where you can go. I also think that by that uh, you got some privileges and the privileges is among others with your diploma that is there, but you also got responsibilities in there and that's about this speaking up. I think the resemblance with the river is a very nice one and I think like what's said also, sometimes it's rough, sometimes it's easy, you go with the flow, but that can be a hard way to go for. And that's why uh, we also gave you this book. This is a small booklet that was with small stories and poems in there that were made by predecessors of yours, but also by other people in the water sector. So I hope that in the time that you either want to relax or that you have a rough time, please have a look in the book and uh, maybe you will find a story in there that will inspire you and will help you also to find your way forward again. So with that, I would like to thank you all again. I also would like to thank all the people that helped making this possible. And I would like to invite you first for the picture and later on for drinks and a bite. Thank you. Thank you.